welcome to the Writing in Your Jammies podcast. I'm your host, Jeannie Hall, and I'm a creative inspiration coach who helps writers reignite their creative sparks. This podcast is here to help you knock down any barriers that stand between you and your dreams. You can do it. Join me. Hello and welcome to the Writing in Your Jammies podcast. This is episode 43. Variety is the spice of life. So variety is essential to any long-term writer's career because if you're in any kind of creative pursuit type of career and you want to stay in it and continue to love it as much as you first did, variety is one of those things that's absolutely necessary. Because otherwise, as most of us know in this instant gratification world that we have, everybody gets bored. (laughs) So we want to make sure that whatever it is that we're pursuing, whatever dreams it is that we want to fulfill and pursue and live, that we're having fun doing it. And part of that fun is making sure there is plenty of variety in what we're doing so we don't get tired of doing the same old, same old. That's the problem that a lot of people have with day jobs or any other parts of their lives is that it's the same day in, day out, and they get tired of it. And that's the really cool thing about being an author and writer is that you can mix it up however you want. And so... For me, I, of course, am a writer and author. I have been traditionally published through the Wild Rose Press. I have been, I have also done self-publishing at both smashwords.com and also on Amazon. I have, my books are available in both ebook and in paperback. And it's just really fun to have all the different variety. And of course, I'm both a romantic thriller author. I write fiction and in romantic suspense and romantic thriller in that particular genre. And then, as you know, I also do a lot of nonfiction for so far ebooks in the form of the Writing in My Jammies series, which is all about personal development, inspiration, positivity, and personal growth. So All of that writing really has made my life as a writer and author a lot of fun and lots of different ideas to pursue and lots of different ways to go. So when I started my writing journey at 33 years of age, which was 11 years ago now, I fell in love with writing my romantic thriller. And so that's what I started writing. My first story was about a pair of young sisters who escape a dangerous religious David Koresh type of cult. And the sisters run from this horrific past that they had with him. He was not a nice guy and very scary. So they began looking for a new life, states away from there, hit in this hidden compound in rural Oklahoma, hidden away in the woods, basically. And so the eldest sister in my story, her name was Linnea. She falls for a college professor. Once they get away from Oklahoma, they get to a place, a little college town in Virginia, and she falls for this college professor while she's working at a local college. And that kind of brings in the element of hope and romance to my story for the first time because it starts out very dark. You discover Linnea has been married to this cult leader since she was only 12. So her life has been very dark and very dangerous and one of a lot of fear and horror and things like that. And she has this little sister to consider, Corinne, that she calls Corey. And because of she's got her sister to protect and to worry about, She has a lot of that going on as well. That's part of the reason she ran. So that was a very dark story. The, you know, the protagonist Linnea's past and her sister's past, they're just completely nightmarish and it's full of abuse 
And so her new romance that Linnea develops with this new character named Brennan, the college professor, it makes their romance pretty difficult to start off with especially. And writing that story, at times the plot grew really dark and disturbing, and I kind of compare it to an episode of Criminal Minds at times. It was very, there were some horror elements, there was a lot of terror, um, a lot of just outright fear and living with that tension and how she got through that is the basis of the story. And of course, it's still a romance, so you still have to try and reach some kind of happiness with the romance. And that can be a challenge whenever your your main character is trying to escape this very dangerous cult leader. And when I was first writing that and the whole through the whole process, which was basically 10 years from the time I had the idea and started writing it until the time it was actually published by my publisher, it was 10 years. And I really loved the fast paced nature of that story and and that plot in general. And if you're listening to this, or if you're reading the blog on this will be posted actually on my blog, writing in your jammies.com. It'll also be on the sisterhood of suspense blog, which I'm also a part of. I'm a part of a group of suspense authors who write a whole bunch of different things and we're called the sisterhood of suspense. So check that out. If you, if you enjoy suspense or mystery or any romance, any of those elements in your story, I definitely would encourage you to go check that out. There are best-selling authors, a part of our group. So it's a really great group of ladies that I'm a part of, and I'm proud to be a part of that organization. So One thing, though, that I discovered once I became published was that writing in the same really dark and intense vein for my second book really didn't appeal to me. And looking back at that now, I think it had a lot to do with where I was personally. I, at the time I wrote that book, I think I was trying to deal with some of the fear and doubt and anger and different things I was dealing with just trying to release from my own life, basically on a personal level. And so writing that was very cathartic to me writing that first book, which is named a violation of faith was very cathartic. It was a kind of a releasing out into the ethers of all those kind of poisonous emotions that just breed more fear and more darkness in, into our souls, basically. And I wanted to release that and get rid of it. So once I was done with that book and I went back to that storyline because I love the character so much. I love Linnea. I love Brennan. And I wanted to see how their story worked out in the future. I wanted to go back to them and visit them again. One thing I discovered, though, was that I started writing the sequel and I just had a horrible time getting that sequel down on the page. I just for some reason, I just kept hitting roadblock after roadblock. And I just discovered that I didn't really want to write that again. It wasn't that I didn't want to visit the characters again, but I did not want to write such a horror filled, dark you know, (laughs) type of book. I mean, this is a very intensely written book. There's a lot of, I always warn people that it's very R rated whenever like friends or family or coworkers or whatever have, have asked to read my book and wanted me to share it with them. I always tell them, okay, but it's very R rated. There's full on sex scenes. There's cursing. There's profanity. There's some pretty intense non-consensual sex scenes, you know, I always warn them because I don't want anybody to be offended. But at the same time, that was the truth. That was the authentic part that was coming out of, of my own emotions and wanting to get rid of that, I think. So that came into that book. But once that was kind of exercised, I didn't want to revisit it anymore, at least not that kind of tone and that kind of darkness in what I was writing. So I left my sequel behind. I'm not saying I'll never go back to it. I think I will, although I think the second story in the series will be much lighter. I am calling it my cult life series, and I do plan on continuing to write that. But at this point, I think it'll lighten up significantly in the future because I don't want to revisit those kind of horrific abuse stories again. (laughs) So 
I decided to write something completely different in 2016. I started working on a Christmas novella called A Midnight Clear. And that one, it was way a way lighter tone. It was still a suspense thriller. It still had the elements of fear and running away and different things like that. But it was completely different characters. And it was also a much sexier, fun tone. So that was a completely different project. And I completed that very quickly. What had taken me 10 years, that first novel, which was, I think in in the paperback form, it's a little over 300 pages and it's like 72,000 words. My first book, A Violation of Faith, my little novella is about half that length. And it only took me about three months to write, which is astounding considering it took 10 years for me to write the first one. So... I also went from, with that little novella, I went from being, going with the traditional publishing company for the first novel to my second project, A Midnight Clear. I self-published at both Smashwords and at Amazon.com. And I just found it to be incredibly liberating to be in complete control of my plot and my editing like I was. It left me feeling really free and really happy with the end product that I have. I'm a former English teacher and I'm kind of, it's kind of a joke that I have with, you know, some of my author friends, we all joke about how we're grammar Nazis, you know, (laughs) and spelling and all that kind of stuff that we're, we're so hard on ourselves when we write. And because a lot of us came from English backgrounds, English teaching backgrounds, and I was certainly one of those people. And can be a bit I have been certainly in the past a bit of a perfectionist so whenever I edit my own stuff I actually disagreed sometimes with my own editor at times with the traditional publishing company and actually found errors I actually didn't create myself so (laughs) so yeah it's a little bit better when you can make sure you have complete creative control of something especially if you're very careful with your grammar and your editing and you know everything's spelled correctly and you know it's in the right place even though it's nice you know it's necessary to have someone else look at it just for in case you're missing a word and that kind of thing but at the in the end it's really nice for someone who is very much a proofreader and very careful with their writing to be able to know that everything they wrote is what they intended and that's how I felt being a self-published author. So that was incredibly freeing to me. And then after that, I went to something I never imagined. When I first became a writer at 33 years of age, I never imagined that I would then go into a genre like nonfiction. I just didn't see it coming at all. To me, nonfiction was textbooks and technical manuals and boring stuff. I just didn't, I didn't really think of it being anything but that, even though I know it is. Deep down, I I think that's kind of how I always characterize that. So then whenever I started writing nonfiction and it was all from my own heart and it was all about how, how to help people to feel better in their lives in general. And it was all about spirituality and law of attraction and inspiration. And anybody who's listened to this podcast before already knows that's what my main subject matter is. And it was so, again, liberating again. And writing those little books, these are much shorter books, they're about 7,000 words. They have little exercises at the back to help people to figure out what they want to do and how they want to pursue their dreams, how to make their writing lives easier if they're a writer. And writing those have just been so much fun. And they're very easy to consume. It's usually like a one sitting self-help book. And that's just been a joy. Those have been such a joy to write. So I found so much joy in writing during my whole writing career, but each project has been very different from the other. Even in my self-help personal development eBooks, each one has been different. Even though it's all about being happier and having great, more fun in your life and things like that, Each one is different. One is about like your pets. One is about feeling better in general. One is specifically geared toward writing and writers. So with all that in mind, one is about feelings and the the power of your emotions in your life. So even within that series of little eBooks, each one carries, does a completely different topic. So 
again, the variety part of that was what was so important to me. And so the variety of going from dark and intense thriller novel to sexy, suspenseful novella to these little nonfiction ebooks, it just kept me, kept my muse very active. And I felt very creative during that year of 2016, which was when much of this was written. And then in 2017, I found even more inspiration by adding more variety to my writing by focusing on my blogs. I had had a blog whenever I was an author and I did blog somewhat frequently, but I wasn't consistent at all. And I found that the only interaction I was having was the occasional author that was published with my own publisher or the occasional author that I knew through my sister of suspense or something like that. Some of, sometimes I would get people on my blog from that, but I wasn't consistent enough to really, I think, get in the rankings and stuff like that. And so I don't think anybody knew who I was or, or had found me or found my books very much. So by adding that the new blog, writing in your jammies and just challenging myself and committing to a regular consistent schedule that has made all the difference in what I feel like I'm contributing because I'm able to put things out on a regular basis. I do, of course, send out personal development, spirituality, law of attraction stuff on a regular basis, but I also contribute writing tips and things for the writing life and things like that because I also feel like that's very important being an author is a very kind of different way of living especially if you're doing that for a living and you don't have a day job and you're able to focus 100% of your career at home writing in your own time it can be a very lonely life and so you do need that other social interaction and writing to that need has been um, really fun and interesting and again part of that variety that we all need and so and then I discovered of course last year in 2017 that I really enjoyed podcasting of course it's just what I'm doing right now and it it's opened up a whole nother branch of uniqueness and variety to my life and so sharing that has been such a gift and such a blessing to me and has kept me interested I I continually write these long blogs that go along with my podcast and I publish them twice a week even though I work a lot of hours at my day job I'm still able to do that because I make a commitment to do that I make a commitment that I want to be there for you guys and give you something new to listen to every you know every week twice a week so that's been really important to me so now the variety that I have isn't just igniting my creative sparks it's also allowing me to have this fresh new medium to share my stories. And it's also making my listeners aware, you guys, of my endeavor to serve as a creative inspiration coach, which I'm there for other writers struggling with their muses because I've also been there. And so it's as as exciting as it is rewarding and I love it. And variety is a wonderful thing. And another great example of variety is my sisterhood of suspense group just in general all these ladies are absolutely fantastic wonderful kind ladies to work with and the sisters and they all share each other's stuff and help get the word out there and that is so rewarding as well and they write everything from straight suspense to spine tingling thrillers to traditional mysteries to nat- supernatural romance as well. So there's all sorts of stuff. And there's also some nonfiction writers in there who we have uh, some a lady who writes about cats and we have a lady who writes about her career in medicine and as an emergency responder and things like that. So lots of lo- different walks of life going into this group and lots of different fantastic ladies to get to know. So we can offer our visitors to our own personal sites and to the Sisterhood of Suspense website and our followers and our readers a really unique and wide variety of genre and voices. So again, I think this is an extraordinary gift and I'm happy to share that with you guys now. So it's also a part of, like I said before, authors 
it can be a lonely existence, but by being a part of the sisterhood, it offers camaraderie and we get to combine our resources and share our individual talents together so that you guys get a, 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 a greater experience of writing and in, of blogging and of all of that. So if you're looking for romance and mystery, and or if you just really love Las Vegas, check out author Pat Amston. I have her website linked in the blog, so check her out if you like romance mystery in Las Vegas. Also, if you like uh, multiple romantic comedies featuring unique handbags, Vicki Batman is the author for you. If you like romantic suspense with a tough alpha male or something a little bit more supernatural in your reading, look no further than Jackie Bigger. If you like emergency room romances and kind of medical romances, go to Sam Bradley. She writes as McKenna Sinclair, and I've linked her blog as well. She also has her own long-running disaster podcast. So that's really interesting. I've also got the link to that in the blog and in the show notes. Author Veronica Ferrand is where you'll find where you'll want to look for romances that have more of a thriller edge to them. I loved reading her stuff as well. She's she's got a great fast pace and very intense writing. So if you like that, check her out. If you like your romances to make you both laugh and cry, Claire Jim would be perfect for you. If you're in the mood for a series of cozy mysteries, or paranormal romances or inspirational literature, try Joanne Gudicio. I hope I pronounced it right, Joanne. I've only seen it written, so hopefully I'm saying it right. I apologize if I didn't. If you like a mix of things, check out Catherine Jane. She writes novels full of mystery, suspense, adventure, psychic abilities, and romance, and she often features animals in her story. And she's also the author of the cat books that are recent releases of her. So check that out. If you like contemporary romance and romantic suspense, be on the lookout for author Mia Kay. And Marion Lenoet is writing as Mary Holly. She has a lot of Christmas and holiday oriented stories, and she's a multi published author of both mystery and romance. Julie Mulhern is a best-selling author of mysteries, historical romances, and romantic suspense, including The Country Club Murders. A Jackie Bigger is also a best-selling author, just so, just not to forget that. If you like high emotional stakes, balanced with a touch of humor, check out Stephanie or S.A. Taylor's Contemporaries and her romantic suspenses as well. If you like romantic suspense that's flavored with second chances at love, Give Marsha West's Second Chances series a look-see. And if you like stories of adventure, suspense, and love your cup of tea, grab Sharon Ray's Deadly Force series. I consider it such a privilege to work with all of these fabulous ladies. They are a joy to work with. And so, and they're a fantastic group of authors. So check out their books, check out their websites, which I've linked in all the show notes. Check out Sam Bradley's um, wonderful podcast. I hope we'll have more from the Sister of, of Suspense in the future. Have a great day, week, month, and year. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for listening to the Writing in Your Jammies podcast. I appreciate every download and every person who has subscribed. I release new episodes every Wednesday and Saturday, so if you enjoy this content, please consider leaving a review. The more reviews fledgling shows like mine receive, the more visible it becomes on the various podcast stations. Each review helps, so if you enjoy what I've been sharing, please help others find this show by leaving a brief review. Thanks again for listening.